Welcome to lesson one of the Octave Mandolin course. In this lesson, we will be looking at five chords and a basic jig rhythm. In Irish traditional music, the main chords you will be using as a beginner are D, G, and A. Here is the first chord you should know. I've called it the D major minor chord middle. Uh, it's quite an awkward name, but there's a good reason for it. Um, the middle refers to where the chord is located on the actual instrument uh, in the middle. So there will also be a D major minor low chord played at the lower end of the instrument and a D major minor high chord played at the top end of the instrument. We will learn these other chords later in the course, but for now the most useful and by far the most popular chord is the D major minor chord middle. Uh, furthermore, the major minor part of the name means that it can be used as a D major chord or a D minor chord. So by learning this one chord, you've actually learnt two chords, D major and D minor. This is actually quite a common feature when learning the octave mandolin. Many chords can be used as major or minor chords. Uh, so this is very handy and quite different from the guitar. So this chord, uh, the D major minor middle chord, is played on the bottom string on the 7th fret. As you can see, I use my 2nd finger to hold the string down. The reasons for this are partly due to personal taste, but it also facilitates easier movement from one chord to the next. Here is the 2nd chord to learn. I've called it the G major low chord because it's located at the bottom end of the instrument. Again, there will be a G major middle and a G major high chord that we'll be looking at later in the course, but this is the most common version of the G major chord on the octave mandolin, so it's best to learn this version first. Uh, the G major low chord is played on the second string from the top on the second fret. As you can see, I use my first finger to hold this string down. Um, it's probably the most obvious and natural position to play this chord. Here is the third chord we will be looking at in this lesson. I've called it the A major minor low and quick chord. Again, the major minor part of the name means that this chord functions as a major chord or as a minor chord, just like the D major minor middle chord we looked at a moment ago. The low part of the name refers to its position on the instrument, it's played at the bottom of the instrument, and the quick part of the name means that I can use this chord to move quickly from A onto another chord, and that's usually back to the D major minor middle chord. The A major minor low and quick chord is played on the two bottom strings on the second fret. As you can see, I use my second and third finger to hold down the two strings that make this chord. Now the main reason for this is that nine times out of ten, the next chord after the A chord is the D major minor middle chord, the first chord that we looked at. And to get back to this chord, you can simply slide your finger all the way back up to the seventh fret. Um, we'll actually see this in the next slide when I play for you all three chords we've looked at so far in sequence. Now that you know the first three chords, the D chord, the G chord and the A chord, there are already many tunes that you can accompany using just these three chords. So let's look at one of the most popular dance types in our traditional music and that's the jig. Like the rhythms played on a guitar, all the rhythms on the octave mandolin are just a series of upstrokes and downstrokes. Here you can see the basic jig rhythm. It starts with a hard downstroke, that's coloured red, followed by another downstroke, an upstroke, a downstroke, and ending on an upstroke. And I've just repeated that rhythm in the next bar, so you should be playing something that um, follows the down, down, up, down, up, 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 over and over and over again. 
to accompany a jig you simply play this rhythm um, until the tune stops and you play it on your right hand usually with a pick uh, while changing chords with your left hand. So in the next slide you will see and hear me playing this basic jig rhythm using the three chords we've already looked at. So what you've just heard is enough to accompany the first part or the A section of many jigs but most dance tunes have two parts to them, an A section and a B section. For the B section of the basic jig rhythm I'm going to show you two more chords, the final two chords of this lesson. They are the B minor chord and the A major high chord. Let's look at the A major high chord first. Okay, so the A major high chord is played on the bottom two strings on the 6th and 7th frets. This chord is used primarily to connect the D major minor high chord and the next chord we'll be looking at, the B minor chord. The way I play the A major high chord is to hold the bottom two strings on the 6th and 7th frets with my 1st and 2nd finger. Uh, the 1st finger holding the bottom string on the 6th fret and the 2nd finger holding the next string on the 7th fret. So here is the last chord to learn for this lesson, the B minor chord. Now the B minor chord is quite a difficult chord to learn, but it is well worth knowing from the start as it adds a lot of harmonic interest to your accompaniment. You need three fingers to play it because it uses three strings, the two bass strings on the fourth fret and the second string from the top on the second fret. I use my first three fingers to play this chord and as you can see it may look and even feel a little awkward but please stick with it and try your best to learn this chord as it is used regularly often to substitute the D major minor middle chord we've already looked at. Once you know all five chords, the D chord, the G chord, the 2A chords and the B minor chord you can put them together to get some really interesting chord progressions. In the next few slides, I put, the, I put them together to form a descending chord progression, starting on the D major minor middle chord that we looked at at the beginning, moving to the A major high chord that we've just looked at, then to the B minor chord that we've just looked at, then to the A major minor low quick chord we looked at at the start, before ending uh, the progression on the G major low chord and moving back to the A major minor low quick chord. In essence this progression is simply moving down as a scale from D to A to B minor to A to G back up to A using inversions of these chords along the way. I recommend learning this progression by heart as it is used time and time again when accompanying jigs or reels or hornpipes or polkas or any dance tune. So here is how it sounds.
So that last piece was in the key of D and the chord progression that we were playing on the instrument reflected that key. But what happens if you want to play in a different key? What happens if you want to accompany a tune that's say in the key of G major? Well all you need to do is to add your capo onto the 5th fret of the instrument. So count up 5 frets on your instrument and then add your capo and just use the exact same chords again. It's just a cheat. I suppose it's a way of getting around having to learn different chords for different keys. Um, we will be doing that in a more advanced class where you can accompany any tune in any key without a capo. But just for the beginner course, I think it's a good idea to get used to adding the capo. And just to show you that it's exactly the same chords that can be used for any key, just as long as you add your capo on the right fret. Okay, so the next piece we're going to play is um, Out on the Ocean, which is another jig, but this time it's in the key of G major. So add your capo onto the 5th fret and use the exact same chords that you were using in the last tune. <laughs> 